As I'm recording this, it is the second half of the month of September 2025, and we are on the precipice of the federal tax subsidy for purchasing of electric vehicles ending. $7,500 on the hood of electric vehicles getting ready to be taken away. The uh, federal government passed a big, beautiful bill, and as part of those um, uh, regulations or laws that were passed, the $7,500 tax credit is being sunsetted <clears throat> at the end of this month. And uh, I wanted to see if I couldn't find a data-driven perspective about what to expect, because there's a lot of hyperbole going on about the uh, future of electric vehicles as the result of the loss of the $7,500 tax credit. And if we could roll the clock back just a little bit, that $7,500 $7, tax credit did not always exist. Uh, Electric vehicles were selling just fine. They were growing. Uh, there was a year-over-year -year growth, and uh, the $7,500 tax credit was introduced, and it became a bit of a political football all of a sudden, and electric vehicles then became a target, and all kinds of other things started to happen. I'm not going to dichotomize it too much, but let's see if we can't get a data-driven perspective. Uh, Clean Technica, a Zachary Shanahan, uh, authored this article, which I'll link down below in the description, with some speculation about what to expect. Obviously, we've seen a spike in electric vehicle sales leading up to the $7,500 tax credit, which is rather predictable consumer behavior. So we are actually in the midst of one of the uh, best months ever at, I think it's about 9.7% electric vehicle sales in the month of August. And then September is expected to be just a little bit higher. It might actually break double digits here in the United States for the first time ever. But... Um, this article actually didn't have a lot of substance. There's a lot of speculation. So um, if you want to read it, I will put it down in the description. But there was this other um, Clean Technica article that it did have a lot of hard data. And this is the one I really want to dial in on because <clears throat> these plots, and I'm going to draw your attention to the green one. Green one equals global sales. Because what I've been noticing, different markets adjust differently at different times. But the trend of global adoption of electric vehicles is still continuing. You can see China is really starting to take off. And this little dot off the line for Europe is um, a little bit antiquated. It's a little bit dated. So this is 2024 and we're over here in 2025. Really what you have to do is keep your eye on the green line because the different uh, automobile markets fluctuate as time goes on, and I'm going to get to this at the end of the video, that it's really a summation of the technology because we're not just isolated silos of markets. If there's a lot of electric vehicles being sold over here, eventually they're going to make their way into this market one way or the other, and vice versa. If we suddenly spike in electric vehicle sales, eventually they're going to make it elsewhere. The United States is a very... Um, a um, market that kind of drives uh, the industry as a whole just because we're one of the largest uh, purchasers of new vehicles. We've got a very wealthy consumer base, and uh, so everyone wants to take a slice of the American pie and uh, sell their cars. So what we buy has a tremendous influence on the rest of the world. And similarly in China, they're putting out increasingly impressive statistics for sales, and also the actual cars have increasingly impressive um, a, um, stats associated with them, with the uh, battery and the charging, and uh, the price obviously is is getting very attractive, and they've pretty well got a foothold in Europe as a result. I know the uh, BYD brand is pretty prominent uh, throughout Europe. Bjorn Nyland uh, does review um, BYD rather routinely, and I know they may. Um, mark in Mexico, and there's talk about them showing up into Canada. So you would think eventually they're going to show up here in the United States one way or the other. And uh, once they do, then it's a different competitive game because, in my opinion, the electric vehicle uh, purchasing decision is really not a political decision. It's a quality of life. If I could have a reliable car that doesn't break down, I have a um, Chevrolet Equinox in my garage 14,000 miles on it, I have yet to bring it into the shop. No oil changes, no nothing. And um, it just works like a champ, which is exactly the dream come true for 
automobile ownership. You know, it's a hassle-free vehicle that I get to fuel in my garage so I don't have to be bothered with going to gas stations anymore. Really, that's the play here. It's not politics. It's household economics. And when you look at the numbers, it really makes sense to go electric. I'm going to get off my soapbox here and get back to the data. So my point is that we need to stick with the green line. Now, there's a couple of things going on with this green line that are swinging some of these dots in different directions. Like the yellow one, Europe has the uh, EV mandate 2035, which is getting a lot of pushback from the OEMs, but it seems to be staying the course. There's some question in recent news releases whether or not there is a uh, bit of a wink by the EU uh, regulators concerning that 2035 mandate. But regardless, one way or the other, European automakers are pumping out electric vehicles in very large quantities. And obviously China is what they are. And we know that the U.S. right now is um, getting ready to have the subsidy removed. So you could expect this red dot to kind of drop off the line a little bit and maybe come back at a later time. We're not sure. But it's really this green line that's important because the one market after another may shift. But if the overall global sales of electric vehicles continues to increase, is really game over. I don't know how any one market can stay isolated. There's too much interconnection and cross-pollinating of uh, sales in the different markets. So let's get into some other bits of information. This is a forecast of electric vehicles on the road um, in 2030 by the National Renewable Energy Laboratory in 2023. Their projection was at the low mark, right around 30 million. Now this has been adjusted down by the best of our reckoning According to the good folks at EVgo in their Q2 uh, investor relation deck, they are now predicting 18.7 million, uh, which is a decrease from the low trajectory here, which was 30 million. So basically, we're 12 million off that down, um, down in in this range. So 18.7 versus a low. Um, scenario of 30 million so we are now definitely decreased below here and i consider the evgo estimate to be realistic but what we don't see is a decrease of electric vehicles. no one anywhere as far as i can tell and i've done some pretty exhaustive searches are suggesting electric vehicles are going to decrease in popularity i don't see this just the the question is how much of an increase are we going to see in the current projection i like this number it's 18.7 million electric vehicles on the road in the United States by 2030 with 137,000 DC fast charger stalls. Um, I think that is a number that we can rely on, at least with the data that we have in hand at this time. Um, another thing to call out with this graph is Tesla has had significant brand erosion. You can't argue otherwise. I know a lot of people who are uh, Tesla centric and you know their stock price is going wild right now with the Elon Musk $1 billion stock purchase, uh, sending the um, street price of Tesla stock over 400 and a few other things with the Robotaxi enthusiasm and um, they're opening up very likely in Nevada soon as well. Um, but there's significant brand erosion in Europe specifically and in Canada, Tesla is no longer the number one electric vehicle maker. In the nation of Canada, there's been so much brand erosion that General Motors has superseded Tesla as the number one electric vehicle. So throw that into the witch's brew of these numbers. Um, so there's going to be a decrease. And my personal opinion is because the industry leader Tesla has had significant brand erosion, what you're also seeing is that factoring into the numbers to a degree that is not zero <laughs> is one of the ways I've heard it described. It's not zero. It's it's noticeable to a degree. And from what I understand in Europe, there's a bit of a bounce back going on right now, but definitely for the um, last two quarters in Europe, there's been a precipitous drop off of um, brand uh, loyalty and purchasing of Teslas throughout Europe. Okay, I said it. Now, Good news. Just today, and I was planning this video before I saw this headline, and this really folds in well to a tail end um, punctuation for what I was getting ready to make this video for. Goldman Sachs released a study on what is expected with the price of batteries. Now, there's been some 
a few other studies on what that is, but Goldman Sachs is looking at a combination of things. They are looking at increases in technical innovation as well as the cost of green energy components. And doing an estimate of what battery prices will be right now, we are at, all right, they're saying 90 at the last, yeah. So in 2024, it was a buck 10 for a kilowatt hour in a automotive grade battery pack. Buck 10, $110. And they're saying in 2025, we are going to drop down to um, $90. By 2030, it's going to be $64. So from 2030 to 2024, if we compare those two points, basically cut in half. And that's what's driving this curve. There's no question about it. A more reliable car that's easier to maintain, doesn't break down as much, is more convenient because I could fuel it at home. Dream come true for the consumer, cost less. And not only does it cost less to operate, total cost of ownership, it actually ends up costing less than the in, uh, comparable internal combustion engine. And there is no end of this. You know, this is just going to keep going down and down and down, at which point it doesn't make sense to buy a, a crazy complex ice engine car that has oil and fluids in order to keep the damn thing going with low energy efficiency and all the headaches with the belts, exhaust, and uh, radiators, and um, the uh, oil changes, and all the headaches that come with that. So, the question is back to the beginning. What should we expect from the loss of the federal subsidies in the end of this month in the United States? I don't know, a big nothing burger as far as I'm concerned. When you look at this green plot line, uh, you'll see a dip in the red, and then it'll snap back at some point in the future, and these other dots will kind of bounce around, but the green uh, line continues on an uptick. Um, we've seen Canada start to uptick um, after their loss of federal subsidies. Uh, we saw Germany bounce back after the loss of their federal subsidies, and the United States will as well because it's just a more compelling product to purchase electric if uh, light duty transportation is the market that you're in and heavy duty I mean medium duty and heavy duty also I mean we could argue about that also I don't, I don't see many other things uh, changing as far as that's concerned as well we've got the Tesla semi factory getting ready to churn out something like uh, 50,000 Tesla semis a year or something crazy like that um, regardless, it all boils down to what Goldman Sachs, and I'm very glad they put this article out, which I will link down below in the description. Battery prices are forecasted to continue to fall. Currently, we are at uh, this level at last marking in 2025 when all the calculations are done. They're expecting to be right around $90 per kilowatt hour in an automotive grade battery pack and continue to decrease steadily year over year from there on out. Thanks for watching.